Hey guys, uh, we are here for our next session. Uh, we have Seb, a uh, co-founder of Zapper, a uh, previous DeFi snap, and he'll be doing a talk on how to build a front end from DeFi Legos, and I'll let him take it from here. All right, um, can you guys hear me? One, two, one, two. All right, perfect. So yes, uh, my name is Seb, and I am very recently the co-founder of Zapper. Uh, we just did the announcement today, um, kind of doing the one-two punch with Zapper. But uh, today, I'll be talking about uh, my learnings from building DeFi Snap um, and um, how to build a, um, a front end from this uh, huge Lego set. Um, so let me pull in the uh, my presentation. All right, um, so I won't be able to see your questions for this part, um, but at the end, there'll be uh, some time for the questions. Okay, so um, a little bit of history on DeFi Snap. Um, I launched it on January 14th, and it came from a problem I had from uh, tracking my own uh, DeFi portfolio. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you also had this kind of problem. Uh, initially, my um, solution was having a spreadsheet, but uh, quickly became overwhelming to maintain a spreadsheet. Um, so it became a obvious solution to build uh, something automated for this. So yeah, the goal, uh, the goal is to help users understand their portfolio. Um, and it started from three protocols um, and now supports about 19. Um, I think I kind of lost count on the number of protocols, but um, yeah, continuing to add protocols. So I'll kind of show you my learnings from working with so many different protocols um, in this presentation. Um, so yeah, we started with uh, Compound, Uniswap, and Synthetix. Uh, started with those three protocols to add to DeFi Snap um, because they were the ones I personally used uh, as a user. Um, so to me, like DeFi Snap was initially solving my own use case, but obviously as DeFi Snap grew, um, more use case appeared. appeared uh, and now, well, DeFi Snap has multiple protocols obviously um, and okay so some learnings on the tech side of adding a lot of different protocols um, initially um, i would you know go on the compound website go on the um, synthetics website and look at their dev and if there was like a third party tool i would go ahead and install it um, and the thing is like as the uh, as the website grew um, the number of third-party packages grew and grew and grew, and it became like almost uh, like too big to um, to deploy. Um, and so I relied way too much. And what I discovered is that you know a lot of these uh, SDKs or um, or third-party packages are not just like nice little wrappers, I guess, um, over their own uh, products. Um, and I discovered I relied way too much on it, and I could just you know read uh, the um, the user balances directly uh, from the smart contracts on chain um so yeah don't be scared to interact directly with the smart contracts um, i see a lot of people are kind of um, like i said scared of just um, diving deep in the smart contracts they like they prefer to use you know these nice uh, wrappers um, on protocols um, but if you're building a product that has a huge lego set um, with very different protocols um, I would recommend uh, starting with um, maybe just having two or three, you know, using two or three third parties, but uh, the rest just, you know, dive in and use the, the smart contracts. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a trade-off with using directly the smart contracts. Um, so as you saw on the right image, um, like the addresses are hard-coded on uh, DeFi Snap's end. Um, and the kind of risk that goes with that is that, so say that Compound changes a, an address or deploys a new contract at a different address, well, it means that I have to update it on DeFi Snap's end. So yeah, contracts address, addresses change, uh, but not that much. So that's something I was kind of surprised. I was kind of um, concerned of you know going full on and adding these addresses manually. Um, but as I found, um, the addresses don't change that much, even uh, from having 19 different protocols to support. Um, 
So yeah, in this presentation, I also want to talk about the UI side of things, um, not only the tech. Um, so from designing the dashboard, uh, the DeFi Snap dashboard, I realized that um, less is more. Um, don't show protocols that the user hasn't interacted with. Um, you don't want to like just rain down all the different you know Legos or protocols in their face. Um, a lot of them they might have never interacted with. Um, so you just want to keep it really simple um, and show really the uh, the only protocols that the user has interacted with. Um, also very important to you know categorize the different protocols. Um, initially, when I started DeFi Snap, I would just kind of you know drill down the huge a huge list um, on the homepage. But now I've started um, categorizing in different you know DeFi sets, if I can say. Um, so liquidity pools, which would include Curve. Um, which would include Uniswap, uh, Balancer, Insurance, Outopen. Um, so yeah, it's important to just not you know shoot all these protocols at the same time. Um, and also, um, don't show raw data. And I'll kind of explain what I mean by raw data. Um, and yeah, interpret that interpret that data for your user base. Um, so going back to um, uh, don't show raw data. Um, here I have a simple example. It's a pretty, uh, I guess, common use case for DeFi. Um, so I'm starting with 10 DAI. Um, and with that 10 DAI, I'm going to lend two of that DAI on Compound, uh, going to trade four of that DAI to Ethereum, and going to pool the uh, effective Ethereum balance with the remainder four DAI on Uniswap. And I'm going to show you how um, this typical action can um, kind of be displayed with different uh, levels of abstractions. So the first one, um, using the previous example, how would it look like um, with level one abstraction? So no abstraction at all. It's as raw as possible. Um, so we have the, uh, here you can see it's Etherscan, the Etherscan dropdown, um, and the Etherscan dropdown, I have compound die and Uniswap V1. Now this particular use case is very good for developers. Um, if I went, uh, if either scan went ahead and totally abstracted this for the user, it would have been probably very confusing for a lot of developers. Um, and they have to reflect what's on the change uh, very precisely. So they won't go, you know, and have that uh, Dharma level of abstraction. Sitting kind of in the middle is a DeFi snap, um, which is more targeted towards the DeFi user. Um, so taking the previous example, you can see uh, there's two die that was uh, deposited into compound and ETH and die that was pulled together in Uniswap. Um, and the reason why I am not showing compound die or C die is that we don't have this exchange rate in our mind between C die and compound die. And also you want to have a, um, a UI that represents most closely the path that the user took. Um, so as a user, um, I went into compound, I took two die and I deposited two die in compound. If I see in the end that I have 97 C die, I would be probably uh, confused. So it's very important to take the, the same kind of logical path that the user took before. On the third level, you have the everyday Joe. Um, the, uh, I'm taking the example of uh, Dharma here. Uh, so Dharma, it's completely abstracted. Uh, in this case, um, Dharma, they lend out die on uh, compound, but the user has no idea of that. Um, and that's important for their own market because the everyday Joe, he puts in $100. If he sees that he has die um, that's earning interest in compound, he would be probably confused. And even his trust in the product would diminish. Um, and like I said, it's really important to kind of go through the user path um, to uh, decide how you want to display these uh, DeFi Legos. Um, so the key takeaway is understand your users. I know it may sound obvious to a lot of you, but um, it's, very, uh, it's very frequent that uh, you kind of take assumptions on what your user believe and see in the interface, but it's really important to um, kind of be in their shoes um, and not take anything for granted. Um, and the easiest way to understand your users, your users is to be a user of your own product. 
Um, so in the case of DeFi Snap, I am myself, you know, a user. I uh, I'd like to know, you know, where the hell is my money? Um, I want to see my portfolio. So it's in a sense easy to me to get to understand a user um, and to kind of understand what they'd like to see in the, in a dashboard. So another thing uh, with Legos. Um, Right now, we're dealing with a Cambrian explosion of DeFi protocols. Um, from the time I started DeFi Snap to today, um, we've seen a huge explosion um, and almost overwhelmingly. Um, to me, uh, it's really hard to track what's going on. And so how do you basically deal with that? Um, you have a Lego set and Lego new Legos keep appearing in that set. Um, and what do you do with it? Um, so here I made a little uh, analogy with uh, Harry Potter. Um, so basically you want to be Harry, you want to be proactive and you don't want to be on Petunia. That's just completely overwhelmed and uh, sad by the number of new protocols that, uh, that pop up. And I think one approach that you see in a lot of pro uh, products, I'm thinking of Instadap, uh, thinking of Zirion, is they're taking a pro proactive approach to um, solving this problem. Um, so, Zirion, uh, Zapper, Instadap, we all know that it's, it's only going to get harder and harder to track all these new uh, emerging protocols. So, you can't really um, depend on your own team to, you know, just pull out all those protocols. So, one solution is to allow the community to build. So, they can build their own integrations. Um, you've seen that with the DeFi SDK, Instadap launch that as well. Um, so it's a community um, type, um, community driven um, building. Um, but it's also important to not uh, also wait on the community to build stuff for you. You have to lead the charge. Um, so in the case of uh, Zirian, um, well, actually all of them, uh, um, we're all you know leading the charge, leading with integrations. And as you're leading, um, you kind of build that community community aspect around your product. Um, so saying example, um, Zapper wants to build this new integration, uh, this new Lego set. Uh, by ourselves building that Lego set, we kind of um, we kind of uh, find out what's a good way of building Legos, if I can say, um, and in return um, helps um, the community um, building those Legos. And another thing is. Don't try to scale, uh, scale too fast. Um, and I see that in countless different projects. Um, you see people that just over-engineer um, and spend too much time um, trying to, uh, to over-engineer. So taking kind of Pareto's law, um, if you're spending 80% time on scaling, that's too much time that you're not spending on the product. And taking a live example with DeFi Snap, um, a lot of DeFi snaps uh, of a lot of DeFi snaps contracts are hard coded, um, and that's fine for now. Probably in the future um, it'll have to change, but for now it works. Um, and as the product grows, then that's when you can start to scale. So it's important to really be focused on the product um, and not really on the scaling. That comes much later um, in your uh, DeFi adventure. Um, so yeah, before I go to questions, actually no, let's let's do some questions, um, and if we have time, I can maybe do a little, uh, show you some live uh, integrations. All right. What tools would you wish existed to, uh, to make your li life easier? Um, that's a really good question. Um, so one part I didn't talk about uh, during the presentation is um, dealing with uh, Ethereum uh, nodes. So right now, if you guys are curious, you can go on DeFi Snap and just check your network uh, calls. You'll see it's basically just spamming a Ethereum node, um, which can make a lot, you know, adds a stress to uh, to the node. So I would say um, what would definitely make my life easier is to have a um, 
better uh, better integrations with Ethereum nodes. So maybe it's like a wrapper. Um, I see like stuff like the graph is amazing because these are nice wrappers that allow you to um, uh, talk to a node. Um, but that's definitely something that would make my life easier. I'm not a dev. What is your connection to mainnet? Do you run a node or connect through MetaMask? Okay, that's a good question. Um, so right now I'm using a mix of um, Infura and Alchemy. Um, so for Alchemy, I'm, I'm using them for uh, archive data. Um, so for example, um, why would you need archive data? I'm using it for um, my synthetics integration. So if you go on the synthetics page, you'll see a graph of your debt history through time. Um, and that data is only available through a archive node. Um, and for the rest of the calls, like it's only um, live data, I guess. So it's dealing directly with Infura. And uh, if the user connects with a wallet, then that'll be the, uh, the uh, provider. Which DBs technologies do you use in the backend? So DeFi Snap has no backend. And that's cool with a lot of DeFi projects. You do not need a backend. It's just a front end and a node. And I would say, like, keep it as simple as possible. Um, I maybe thought of having a backend to maybe make some things a bit faster. But honestly, uh, it's not worth it um, to begin with. Um, and that's something I find really cool about you know DeFi projects is that, yeah, it only takes a front end. Um, my stack right now is React, Redux, um, and it's sitting directly on top of a node, no other dependencies, which is, in my opinion, really cool. Um, and I think in the future, actually, um, just a prediction here, but I think we'll see less and less uh, backend and we'll see just the backend become the protocol. So this one's a source of truth. Do you have uh, future plans to share a library as Zirion did with your SDK to share your experience integrating 19 protocols? Yeah, it's definitely a future plan. Um, been pretty busy um, as of now to um, just spinning out the integrations. But yes, I, I think that uh, DeFi projects need to help each other uh, more and not be too siloed into their own integrations. So. And also like user balances and portfolios, this is information that everyone should have. Um, it shouldn't be one project that has it over the other. Um, so to me, yeah, it makes sense to have all the DeFi projects work together to have this like kind of unified uh, portfolio uh, aggregation layer that people can just uh, query to um, display user balances. Um, we have other questions. What do you think DeFi will look like in five, 10 years? Oof, that, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I personally think that uh, DeFi will be massive. It probably won't be called DeFi in five or 10 years. It will just be finance as we know it. Um, but what's really uh, interesting about DeFi right now is the permissionless aspect of the uh, development. Um, and what I think we'll see in the five, 10 years is we're gonna see a ton of new wacky financial products. Um, and I'm really excited to see, um, to see a new financial products that are really new. Um, we kind of tend to go to a previous like the previous financial world to build these new DeFi products like I'm thinking of derivatives uh, options like we're taking things that already exist but now with DeFi we can really go and create completely new financial products and I would definitely love to see more of that um, but I think we're kind of still stuck in our traditional uh, finance frame but as time moves on, we're just going to see really uh, cool, wacky products uh, that are super useful. There's a cool analogy about this. Is um, so Ford when um, like the first versions of their uh, their car, they used a um, like what what you use to steer a horse as the guiding wheel instead of, uh, as the steering wheel instead of just literally a steering wheel, and that's kind of. 
uh, interesting because they took what they had as a frame, so riding a carriage, instead of you know looking into a completely new uh, model. Does Zapper make money? Do they plan to? How? Um, so Zapper right now, we do not make money. Um, in the future, we plan on uh, maybe adding fees um, for zap ins and zap outs, but we really haven't uh, decided uh, on that yet. How big of a problem is gas costs? Have you looked at gas token models? So, for the uh, like, there's two ways you can look at gas costs. Um, so, well, if you look at this question from the DeFi snap perspective, we're just like displaying balances. Well, obviously there's no gas cost because you're just um, querying read-only um, data from the blockchain. But um, yes, uh, gas cost can be a, a big problem sometimes. Um, I'm sure if you know about the, um, the Black Thursday, how gas costs kind of um, impacted uh, a lot of uh, transactions, uh, liquidations. All right, so if we don't have any other questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you a live integration of how I add a new protocol to DeFi Snap. Does that sound good? All right. I'm going to share my screen. All right, so you should should see the Etherscan page right now. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna toggle my video. All right, so my process with adding a new protocol, uh, actually pretty simple. Um, Etherscan is the main tool I use. Um, thank God they exist. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, see how I can integrate zero uh, X. Um, so being able to read uh, balances that are staked through uh, 0x. So right now I'm looking at the 0x staking contract. Um, I found it through the uh, 0x docs. So what I would do is I would go here, I would go on contract. Um, and here is kind of the source code of the, uh, the whole contract. And what's cool is you have a nice option here, which is to read the contract. Um, and from here, you can kind of actually test out some, some calls. So here I could just put in an address and query and I say, oh, okay. Balance of for this address is zero. So that's kind of a good way of understanding, you know, which calls I would need to make to, um, say add, uh, being able to read balances from zero X on DeFi snap. Um, so the very important part is to grab the contract ABI. Um, so the contract ABI is, uh, where is it? It would be here. Sorry if I'm scrolling quickly. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so the contract ABI was at the bottom of the screen. This is very important because this is your instruction set. Um, to be able to uh, query the um, query that contract. So what I'm going to do is, so we've identified the function that returns the balance for the user, the stake balance. So I'm going to go back up. Sorry, I'm scrolling again. Um, so I'm going to go here. So I see that the method to get the balance of the user is balance of. Um, and it returns the zero uh, X, token balance that is staked. So if I go, I'm going to sh uh, share my IDE. 